Good morning and thank you for joining us for this special video report on the state of the trees here in California. I'm Daniel Berlant coming to you live from the CAL FIRE headquarters in Sacramento. Thank you for those of you joining us on Periscope this morning. If you have questions, let us know. We're going to talk a lot about the trees that have died here in California, what's causing that tree mortality, and bark beetles and the drought. So, the past four years of extreme drought have obviously had significant impacts here in California. We have talked here many times over the past couple of years about the increase in wildfires that we have seen because of the drought. But an unintended consequence of the drought as well is the fact that we are seeing millions and millions of trees here in California that have died. In fact, already 22 million trees, over 22 million trees, have died due to the drought and other forest pests like bark beetles. I want to show you a map here. This is a map of California. You can see it is spotted in yellow and orange and red. That is the tree mortality density across California. I want to zoom into uh, the Central Sierra. That's some of the area where we have really seen and the bark beetle and tree mortality really hit hard over the past, uh, really the past several months, but over the past couple of years. So you can see this yellow, the orange, the red, these blobs, all are areas where trees have died. And just to give you a little bit of an idea of where we are right now, this here is Fresno County. This is Millerton Lake. This is Shaver Lake. Now, if I take off 2015, and 2014, 2013, go back to 2012, you can see not a lot of trees dead in the forest. A little bit of tree uh, uh, mortality in the central Sierra. This is again, uh, 2012 right here. 2013, it starts to grow. By 2014, now we're in the third year of a drought, it continues to grow even more. Now, the current survey done by the U.S. Forest Service, an aerial survey done of the high-risk areas of California. You can see just significant uh, tree mortality across Fresno County, the Central Sierra, and this is what we're seeing all the way down into Kern County, uh, all the way up, if you keep on going on the Central uh, on the uh, Sierras, all the way up into Modoc County, Lassen County, so we're seeing significant tree mortality. This here is Shaver Lake, and there's some pictures we'll show you of Shaver Lake, you can see almost completely surrounded this lake now is significant tree mortality. Look what just last year, almost no trees dead, 2015, one year later, significant, significant trees. So what is happening here in California? Well, it has to do with bark beetles. Now, bark beetles are a native pest here in California. We call them a pest, but they actually do some good things for our, for our forests. They go in and they attack the sicker and the weaker trees. They bring them down, helping to thin out the forest naturally. Unfortunately, during drought conditions like we're experiencing now, all of the trees are weak, so they're all susceptible to the bark beetles' attacks. So as those, those bark beetles start to just grow in size, the forests just continue to die off. You can see this is a picture in the uh, Fresno uh, part of the central Sierra. Just several months ago, these trees were alive. Now you can see they are a brownish rust color as they have completely been attacked by the bark beetles. As I mentioned, over 22 million trees already have died from the drought and from bark beetle. And this number is only expected to rise even if we get rainfall over the next winter. Unfortunately, it could take uh, several years before we start to get to start to see that bark beetle epidemic slow down. So significant tree mortality death. You can see at once was a beautiful view of the Central Valley, now just littered with dead trees. And obviously these trees then become a fire hazard. So how do we identify bark beetles? How do you know if your trees are dying, if they're at risk, and what does a bark beetle look like? Well, I want to show you a couple photos that will talk a little bit about that. First, let's start with the trees themselves. The color of the leaves will start to change from a healthy green to a red or even brownish color. You can see right here a very little glimpse of some of the healthier trees, but the rest have all started to turn that rust color. And you may start to see that start from the top of the tree all the way down. It really just depends on the type of tree and the variety of tree itself, but again, a very quick turn in colors. 
Now, the beetle itself, you're going to start to see a very, very small little beetle. In fact, they are uh, almost hard to see from just your, uh, just your eyesight themselves. But zoomed in, you can see this little uh, uh, beetle that's probably no more than the size of a grain of rice is attacking the tree. It starts to burrow its hole in. Now, this white stuff, this is the sap from the tree. As the uh, bark beetle starts to attack it, the tree naturally tries to defend itself by pushing that sap, uh, which we also call pitch. And so we call this a pitch tube. So as the tree is trying to defend itself, it pushes that, uh, that, that bark beetle out and uh, tries to keep it out of the tree itself. Here you can see a tree with several attacks all the way across it. Again, this, the sap coming out of these pitch tubes and in a response to the bark beetle's attacks. Now these white pitch tubes, that means the tree was successful at pushing the bark beetle out. That means the tree was, uh, it continues to fight off. But as we start to get into some of these darker ones, here you can see, here's the white ones. On this side, a dark reddish brown color. That means the tree was unsuccessful at stopping the bark beetle's attack. Now when a tree is healthy, there's a plenty of water inside the tree. That allows it to really have the force it needs to, to fight off the bark beetle's attack. But when the tree is starving for some water, it uh, does not have that power to really defend itself from the bark beetle. So you want to look at your tree. Do you have these little white or brown pitch tubes uh, all over your tree? You can also see some of the signs uh, in the bark itself. Once you take that uh, layer of bark out, you can see the, the beetles just burrow all the way through the top layer of the tree. Uh, and here's a, an example here in real life. You can see it almost it looks like a jigsaw puzzle as the beetles have kind of dug themselves through uh, the, the uh, bark itself and through the, the top layer of the tree. This is where it starts to actually kill the tree. Now it doesn't take long after the bark beetle attacks the tree for it to actually start to, uh, to kill the tree. That happens uh, very quickly. Unfortunately, once the signs of mortality are clear to you, once you see those changing colors in the leaves, once you start to see the pitch tubes or even some of these uh, trails left behind, there's not a lot that can be done for the tree itself beyond removing it to reduce your fire risk. So this trend just continues. Now dead trees obviously fuel more wildfire. And that's why it's so important that you take steps to remove your dead trees to reduce the wildfire risk around your home. And as, every year we talk in the early spring months about having defensible space, clearing out the dead grass, the dead brush. It also includes the dead trees that may have occurred from bark beetles. So around your home, start removing those trees. Uh, tree companies are going to be your first bet to make sure that you have an arborist or a tree removal company that can help you uh, remove those trees. Now a lot of questions people have are do I need a permit to do this? Now because of the drought, the state of emergency that we're seeing with the tree mortality, uh, the state has really cut a lot of the red tape to get permits in the emergencies like this to remove those dead trees. We have a lot of good information on how you need to remove dead trees, what permits may be required in your area on our website prepareforbarkbeetle.org. I'll mention that site uh, here shortly. But again, these dead trees all increase the risk of fires in your area, so you've got to make sure that you remove them uh, early on. You can see it again around the infrastructure, the power lines, all of this at risk when you have dead trees surrounding it because a dead tree cannot withstand the same wind that, and snowfall that we may be able to see on a healthy tree in a normal winter. So you've got to make sure those trees around infrastructure, around homes are removed. So removing your dead trees, again, is important, but also thinning and pruning your native trees. A lot of people say, well, if we can't stop the bark beetle attack, how can we prepare for it? Well, Having a healthy forest is one of the easiest steps that you should take to help make sure your trees are healthy so they can, uh, they can fight off those bark beetle attacks. So thinning your trees is simple. You want to take those weaker trees, those smaller trees, the understory, the brush. Now this is the same recommendations that we have when it comes to defensible space. You want to make sure you're getting rid of what we call the ladder fuels. That's some of this lower vegetation down here under the trees. You want to limb up those limbs. You want to get rid of those smaller trees. Get that brush out there. That way the trees are not fighting for water. They're not fighting for sunlight. That's going to allow your forest to become healthier. So thinning your trees is very important. Uh, the next step is properly watering your trees. Now while we may be moving into the winter months right now, we may see some rainfall, we still could see extended periods of time in your area where we're not seeing water. So you've got to make sure you're watering those high value trees, not only this time of year, but also in the spring months as well. So where you water is just as important 
as when you water. You can see here, here's a tree itself. A lot of people water plants at the base of their plant. The base of the tree is not the area where the tree needs the water. It's those outer roots along the outer edge of the tree here. So you can see, this is the outer edge of the tree. If you start to water these roots, these are the feeder roots. That's where your drip line should be. Uh, for a healthier tree, or a larger tree, I should say, water once or twice a month. Again, around that outer edge of the tree, not at the base. For smaller trees, you may need to water several more times uh, a month to make sure that that water is really getting in, soaking into those trees. Remember though, if it rains, do your part to save our water. Don't water if rain is in the forecast, and don't water 48 hours after rain has occurred in your area. So this again is for periods of extended uh, lack of rain or no rain at all. You've got to keep those trees healthy. So the three steps for homeowners to do, remove the dead trees, thin those weaker trees, those smaller trees, the brush, and make sure you water those high value trees. Those three things are going to give you the fighting chance you need not only to save your trees against this bark beetle attack, but it also helps reduce your fire risk when it comes to wildfires uh, here in California. So for more information on bark beetles, you can visit our website at prepareforbarkbeetle.org. There's a lot of good information on, again, the signs. What does it look like? What do my trees react when they attack by bark beetles? And what can I do? What are my options for removing dead trees? Now, somebody had a question on what, how is Southern California doing? While we are seeing, and I'll go back to our map here, while we are seeing significant uh, tree mortality in Central Sierra, where I showed you earlier, we're still seeing tree mortality in parts of Southern California. Now, historically, areas like Lake Arrowhead has seen significant attack uh, by beetles. Uh, sudden oak death is one of the, the most common causes. The golden spotted oak borne, San Diego, Riverside, and even some parts of San Bernardino County, those two have all uh, seen their fair share over the years of pests and beetles that are killing trees. So it doesn't matter what type of beetle it is, whether it's a gold spotted oak borer, whether it's a, a pine engraver beetle, the beetles are the same, your reaction should be the same. Make sure you're prepared. Again, remove those dead trees, thin your forest out, and water your high value trees. That's the best way you can give your forest a healthy and fighting chance against bark beetles. Again, prepareforbarkbeetle.org, a great website where you can get lots of information and uh, that's all we have for you today. Thanks to all those of you joining us on Periscope. We appreciate it. Again, prepareforbarkbeetle.org. A lot of good information there. Have a fire safe day.